This week's lesson is on the geography and early development of Rome. So I'm starting a new video series. And in this video series, I'm gonna make lists of key items you need to know. So at the end of these videos, we'll have a debate in class whether you agree or disagree with this list and what should have been placed on the list and what should have been removed from the list. Let's start this lesson by talking about Romulus and Remus. You can see here in the picture a wolf in the background on the wall near the Tiber River. Well, the, the myth of Romulus and Remus is the following. Long ago, the story explains a prince gave birth to two sons, Romulus and Remus. The boy's father was Mars, the Roman god for war. Of course, in Greek mythology, this god is known as Ares. The prince's uncle, the king, was afraid the boys would grow up and take his throne. So he ordered his men to drown them in the Tiber River. However, before the twins drowned, a wolf rescued them. When Romulus and Remus grew up, they decided to construct a town on the banks of this river, where the wolf had found them and saved them. However, a quarrel broke out between the two boys. Romulus killed Remus, and he became king of the city which would be called Rome. The tale of Romulus and Remus is a myth, of course. One concept you need to know about is the Tiber River. The Tiber River is, of course, where Rome was settled. It's located in the center of the Italian peninsula, about 12 miles from the sea. Um, the city developed along a hill called Palatine Hill and about six other hills. Perhaps around 700 BCE, a Latin tribe built a small village that eventually became what we know as Rome. The third concept we'll talk about is the arch. The arch was not developed by the Romans, but it was developed by the Romans' predecessor, the Etruscans. The Etruscans were a group that existed in the northern Italian peninsula during ancient times. So a architectural legacy from the Etruscans was the arch. Etruscan arches rested on two pillars which supported a half circle of wedge-shaped stones. A keystone in the center held the other stones of the arch tightly in place. The Romans adopted these structures and in time became even better engineers than the Etruscans. They used arches to build huge public words including bridges, stadiums, and aqueducts to carry water over long distances. The fourth concept to know about the early Roman Empire were gladiators. Romans adopted two bloody sports from the Etruscans. First was chariot races and the second one was slave fighting. The Etruscan custom was to stage slave fights during funerals. Two slaves of the dead master fought to the death with swords and small shields. After being congratulated, the winner was executed. The fifth concept to learn this week is the Pantheon. Now the Pantheon is different from the Parthenon. The Parthenon is the temple of Athena in the city of Athens on top of the Acropolis. The Pantheon is a domed building in the center of Rome. The Romans used Greek designs in their own public buildings. Eventually they learned to use concrete to create even larger structures, such as the Pantheon in Rome that we've been talking about. The Romans also used concrete to build huge stadiums, like the Colosseum, where the gladiators fought, and the Circus Maximus, which was where the chariot races occurred. The Circus Maximus could seat more than 200,000 spectators. The next topic we'll discuss is Greek pottery. Greek pottery was valued throughout the Mediterranean world for its usefulness and its beauty. Greek potters created large clay vessels for storing food, water, and wine. They often painted black figures on red clay. Some of their designs showed pictures of gods and heroes while others illustrated people in their daily lives. The Romans eagerly bought the work of Greek potters into their homes. Roman artists imitated the technique but developed their own style. The Greek influence on Roman painting and sculpture was so great that historians speak of the Greco-Roman art. Wealthy Romans often collected Greek art and built monuments in a Greek style. Roman sculptors and painters used Greek art as models for their own work. The seventh concept we will learn about this week are the Greek gods. The Greeks worshipped a number of gods and goddesses who governed every part of Greek life. The Greeks performed rituals and sacrifices to gain the gods' favor for everything from a good harvest 
to curing the sick. The early Romans had their own gods and rituals, but their ideas about the gods evolved as they interacted with other cultures. When the Romans encountered a similar god from another culture, they blended their god's characteristics with their own. The Romans adopted many of the Greeks' gods as their own, but they gave them Roman names. The mightiest Greek god, Zeus, became Jupiter. Aphrodite, the goddess of love, became Venus, and Ares, the god of war, became Mars. I hope you liked my video project. What things should have been added to the list I made? What things should have been cut from the list I made? We'll have this discussion in class, and I want your feedback. Thanks.